the procession of the cross. The order of liturgy can be followed uh, in the bulletin that is listed. We welcome our guests and visitors with us tonight. We'd ask if you would sign the guest registry in the narthex after the service. This uh, evening, we continue with our sermon series, Surprised by Joy. We're looking at the account of Luke, and in every part of the narrative, uh, we've seen uh, that joy comes bursting forth. We'll consider the theme of joy also, the message to the shepherds this night, uh, that a good, t- good tidings of great joy would be to them and to all people. Tonight we consider God's message of joy, uh, even as we rejoice to hear that this message is also for us. We begin with our opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in Christ, be it this Christmas Eve our care and delight to prepare ourselves to hear again the message of the angels in heart and mind 
to go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass and the babe lying in a manger. Let us read in Mark and Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God from the first days of our disobedience unto the glorious redemption brought us by this holy child. And let us make this church, named Mount Calvary, glad with our carols of praise. But first, let us pray for the needs of his whole world, for peace and goodwill over all the earth, for unity and brotherhood within the church he came to build, and especially for the needs of our land. Let us at this time remember the poor and the helpless, the cold, the hungry, and the oppressed, the sick in body and in mind, and them that mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the little children, all who know not the Lord Jesus, or who love him not, or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. Lastly, let us remember before God all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in a greater light, that multitude which no man can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh, and with whom in this Lord Jesus we forevermore are one. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven and the words words with which Christ himself hath taught us. The Almighty God bless us with his grace. Christ, give us the joys of everlasting life, and unto the fellowship of the citizens above, may the King of angels bring us all. Amen. Please be seated. God tells sinful Adam that he has lost the life of paradise and that the seed of the woman will bruise the serpent's head. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked. And I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to me to be with me, she gave me the fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, Cursed are you above all livestock, and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust shall, you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman he said, I will surely multiply your pains in childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. And to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. And you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread, till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our second lesson, God promises Abraham that in his seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gates of his enemies, and in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. Here ends the reading. Prophet Isaiah foretells the birth of the Savior. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them his light shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the tramping warrior in battle turmoil and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, 
to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This ends the reading. fourth lesson, the angel Gabriel announces the conception of the Son of God to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Luke 1, chapter, uh, verse 26 and follows. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to the city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, and the, uh, of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom, there will, and in his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to, to be born will be called Holy the Son of God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Here ends the reading.
The fifth lesson, a reading from Luke chapter 2. St. Luke announces the birth of Jesus under the emperor Augustus Caesar. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. So far the reading. The sixth lesson, a reading from Luke chapter 2. The angel of the Lord announces the birth of Christ to the shepherds. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger." 
And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Here ends the reading. seventh lesson, a reading from Matthew chapter 2. The wise men are led by the star to Jesus. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. 
they told him, in Bethlehem of Judea. For so it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the days in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. Here ends the reading.
Joy can't be manufactured. It's not something that you can stir up. Seeking joy is a recipe for not finding it at all. Joy sneaks in. One minute you're down and then there's joy. Our sermon series this season of Advent has been just that, surprised by joy. Joy is like that, often a surprise. In the world, there are joys too. There was the parishioner in the congregation who was frustrated with his job all year, wanting to quit, yet unexpectedly received a sizable Christmas bonus. There was the National Guard soldier from Indiana recently receiving medic training in Indian Town Gap and pastoral care here from this congregation, able to return home a night early to the delight of his waiting wife and kids in Indiana. There was the joy of the parishioner who received the doctor's news that it wasn't cancer after all. And there was the joy of sharing with your parents that while you didn't think you could make it through your first semester of college, you did, and with flying colors. These all were real-to-life joys, all experienced here in the very last months by people here in this congregation. And I am sure that if you think about it, you can think of more joys in your life too. Yet our existence as we experience it is often joyless. We trudge through days with Murphy's Law as our creed. If something can possibly go wrong, it probably will. But in the stories of the Christmas account from the Gospel of Luke chapters 1 and 2, we have seen this Advent individuals literally surprised by the unexpected as God aims to bring joy back to earth with the birth of His Son. It started with an old man named Zechariah, continued with a young girl named Mary, and concluded with an unborn son. We saw joy in the strangest of places, a stoic, smoky temple, a quiet, serene home, and even the amniotic sack. Before we recount today's joy, let's review the joys experienced. Zechariah was sure that he would carry out his grumpy, joyless days with his old barren wife until they died alone, yet the angel promised a son. It was good news. You, even grumpy old you, Zechariah, will have joy and gladness, the angel said. Harumph, Zechariah says to himself, disbelieving, we'll see about that. Yet nine months later, when he cradled cradled his baby boy in his arms, something that he imagined that he would never do, the one in his arms to be the prophet, to prepare the way of the Lord, Zechariah sang a song of such rejoicing that was, it was recorded in the scriptures, and we've been singing that song ever since. God can make even stubborn, old, grumpy people rejoice. And Mary was surprised by joy when an angel came with greetings that rendered her baffle. That word, greetings, or hail, can be translated merely as joy. Rejoice, Mary, you are highly favored. She was an ordinary girl carrying on with the normal course of ordinary life, doing little next to nothing except planning to get married to an ordinary Joe. She was not important or special or notable. She was not from an important place or from an important family. She didn't live in a fancy house or wear expensive clothes. She was a person like everyone else, preparing for life's ordinary existence. And then the angel came. You will have a child. You know all the believing women in the past who have hoped in times past that their child would be the one to save and redeem the world. Well, it's you, Mary. It's you. You have been chosen as the woman to bear God's son. And so Mary heard the news about a birth without the aid of a man the special birth of the Son of God from her. 
And Mary sang such a song of rejoicing that was recorded in the scriptures, and we've been singing that song ever since. From now on, she says, all generations will call me blessed. God brought joy to an ordinary girl sitting in her lowly cell, there visited by heaven, as she was taken aback by God's salvation for her and the world. If that wouldn't take the cake for joy, if a grumpy old man and an ordinary young girl weren't enough to give us the idea that maybe, just maybe, God had come in this child to bring joy to our depressing existence, what could God even do more than that? Could God bring joy even for those not yet born? There was a child in utero, the child of the grumpy guy and his wife Elizabeth, now six months along. This child had been destined by the angel to be the prophet to go before the way of the Savior and was tucked quietly in the womb of his mother, now at six months' gestation. A knock at the door, an unexpected visit. Who's at the door? Who would it be? The angel had instructed Mary to go and see the miracle that had also taken place to her aged cousin. So Mary comes there. And she sees the once barren, now pregnant, aged cousin. And Mary begins to sputter with all the things that had also happened to her. Yet when the voice of Mary's greeting alone went forth in that room, it resonated in the ears of the child in Elizabeth's womb. And by the power of the Spirit, he rejoiced that the Savior had come just one womb away. The Savior is here, John is saying, as he dances and leaps and jumps for joy, tickling Elizabeth's ribs from the inside out, even as she became filled with joy at the response of the child in her womb. For joy can sometimes be contagious. And so in each part of Luke's Christmas account, ordinary people from all walks of life are taken off guard. Life is going on in one moment when individuals are surprised by joy. Joy is a response to things that we haven't deserved, you see. It's a response to being graced. It is the knowledge that we have been highly regarded from heaven, no less, and in this veil of tears. that The Father has given what surpasses all joy. For as the prophet Isaiah said, I will give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And tonight is the culmination of all that joy. The shepherds were not the brightest bulbs in the box. Likely that is how you feel. Dumb and stupid, God's lost cause. You allow your despair to thrust you to further rebellion against God. You walk away from him instead of towards. Shepherds were God's rough-and-tumble creatures, working the late-night shift in the plateau of Bethlehem on a starry night, watching some sleeping, stinking sheep. Of all the people in the world, they on that night were the recipients of the message the only ones still up to welcome God-made flesh. Well, how about them, the angels decided as they looked down from above? There was one lone angel that was chosen, first that spoke to them, splendid in the sky. Good news, earthly dwellers. This is angel visit number three, if anyone's counting here. The child has been born. And the news is for you. It was a message that came to them as they were carrying on with their life's drudgery. They were the sorts of people you see in obituaries who live short lives and die unnoticed deaths. An angel showed up to them, and shepherds were forever immortalized. Do not be afraid, for I bring you, shepherds, good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. The shepherds were disturbed. 
To stand before God is never desired. It's worse than scraping plaque off your teeth, facing the principal, trying to get away from a skunk, or undergoing a colonoscopy. As sinners, we know we can't expect to live. We deserve judgment of spite for spite, a turn in spades, a return on our investment. We've walked so God should walk. When we find ourselves near to God in those uncomfortable places, we squirm and expect the finger pointed forever away. We spend our lives avoiding such situations, but instead the shepherds receive the news, fear not, you are forgiven. This message, this child, his life, what he will do for the world is for you. Come to the manger and receive it. And then all heaven lit up like a Christmas tree. Heaven couldn't contain itself as a multitude of the heavenly host burst onto the scene. The shepherds who couldn't tell the difference between a cello or a violin received a Christmas concert that no ear on earth has ever heard. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace, goodwill to men, the angels sang. And we've been singing that song ever since. The message of the angels is this. God's glory is to make known by His Son's life, suffering, and all atoning death, His peace and goodwill and reconciliation with men. God's favor because of the life and offering of sin of this holy child now rests on mankind. It's for you, shepherds, and if it was for them, it will also be for us. The shepherds, overjoyed, went to confirm the place where they were told to go, where to worship the God who has come to earth, a feeding trough of hay and straw. If this child can lay in a bed of straw, certainly your arms and heart are not out of reach. And they found it as the angel had said, and praised God for what they had heard and seen. The story of jo joy is told tonight that you might see that it is for me. It is the joy in a world that is caught up in the rule of power plays. It is the joy in a world that is arguing over who is in charge. It's the story of the life of Jesus, his call of fishermen to be his disciples, his eating with tax collectors and sinners, and his death on the cross for the refuse of the world. It's a joy in heaven over one sinner who returns home, the joy of the prodigal who, naked and ashamed, finds a father who was forgiven years before. It's the joy of a man named Paul who murdered Christians and was called by Jesus to be his greatest disciple. It is a joy that bypasses everything that the world is concerned about now. It is a joy that Christ has brought to you. It is a joy that you have as a baptized child of God. Joy is the recognition that in the birth of this child, God is for us and with us. Joy is therefore ours even in the midst of unhappiness, loneliness, dissatisfaction, or misfortune of all kinds. God is for us in circumstances in which our well-being has been badly broken. Joy is even present in the suffering Christian, and sometimes there even more. Joy is freely given and available to the believer through faith in Jesus. This joy is not produced, but is merely grasped by faith. It is a joy that we discover as we turn each page of God's holy writ, and as we listen in this place, we receive joy as God's word is proclaimed and preached, and as we receive his precious sacrament, Jesus cradled increased hands and broken hearts. The shepherd's joy arose because they recognized 
that God was no more an angry judge who came to inspire fear and terror, but that he loved sinners and wanted them to know that. This joy is for grumpy old men, young girls and babies in the womb. It's the message on this night that a Savior has been born for you. This joy is the knowledge and experience of grace. Tonight is the miraculous turn of events where we do not receive from God what we know we truly deserve. This is the greatest Christmas present, this message. Earthly dwellers, welcome. Be received by this child and by heaven itself. This baby Jesus, the Savior, is God's gift for you. Go with the shepherds, therefore, to Bethlehem's crib to see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to you. Make haste to know the joy and lift up your voice for all the things that God has done as a recipient of his kindness in the salvation of his Son. Joy is now yours in the gift of Jesus. And it's a joy that we can sing about from now on and ever since. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand for the prayers. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that the birth of your only begotten Son in human flesh may set us free, who through sin are held in bondage. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, as you make us glad by the yearly festival of the birth of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, Grant that we who joyfully receive him as our Redeemer may with sure confidence behold him when he comes to be our judge, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May he who by his incarnation gathered into one thing, earthly and heavenly, fill you with the sweetness of God's peace and goodwill. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.